The Roman legionary was a professional soldier fighting the Roman army. The Roman legionaries were made after Gaius Marius' reforms of the Roman army. They were made in 108 BCE, while the Romans were at war with the Numidians of North Africa. They were considered by many to be the greatest fighting force, even after the Roman Empire fell. They were hired under the age of 45 and expected to be in the army for 25 years. As the soldiers were expected to serve for 25 years, they would not just fight wars, but also build infrastructure. They would help Romanize conquered territory by building things such as bathhouses. When Gaius Marius became a consul in 108 BCE, Rome was at war with the Numidians from, the north, from northern Africa. To increase the military manpower, he removed the property requirement for being conscripted into the military. With the end of the war, Gaius wanted to professionalize the military, to make it more effective against larger armies. He increased the training of the Roman legionaries. Roman legionaries would now be sparring with swords and shields twice as heavy as the real ones that they would be using while at war. The idea was to make them quicker with these weapons, as they'd end up being lighter when they actually used it. They also trained stabbing on poles, increasing their accuracy, allowing them to effectively target the abdomen. Gaius also standardized the payment of legionaries, giving them land upon completing their service. He also made it so that service would continue even in times of peace, giving Rome a constant army, rather than raising a new one at the start of each campaign. The legionaries were typically equipped with a full suit of armor. The armor could vary, but was usually either Lorica Hamata or Lorica Squamata, or, in the later 1st to 3rd century, Lorica Segmentata. Lorica Hamada is similar to the mail, or as it's usually called, chainmail armor, used by the knights of the early medieval era. The Lorica Squamata was a type of scale armor. It featured small metal plates overlapping each other. The Squamata was by far the least popular version, with only segments of them being found. The Lorica Segmentata is the most common version in film and media. The armor consists of multiple iron or steel bands stuck together using leather straps. It is armor that the Romans are usually depicted wearing. They are also equipped with a helmet known as the Galae. The design of the Galae varies depending on what war the Romans were fighting and what weapons the enemy was wearing. The base design of it is a dome top that then has straight sides. The back of the helmet has a fan to protect from stabs to the back, the easiest attack to make on a fully kitted out legionary. The sides of the Galae would have cheek flaps made from steel or iron that would be tied together to keep the helmet from falling off. Something common in media is the red frill on the head, but that was something only worn by centurions, the commander of a legion consistent of 80 men. The point of it was to make it easier to tell who was your, who was your commander and thus who to follow. They would also have greaves, which would be worn on the legs. Along with that, they would also wear two monikers on the arms to protect their arms, something that was originally only worn by the gladiators, but with the war against the Dacians, who used falxes, uh, they realized that they were losing their arms very quickly. The legionary would wear caligae on their feet. Caligae were very strong sandals, or boots, which were made from the leather and extremely durable. On their backs, they would wear a marching pack called a sarkina, which, would basic, which was basically a piece of wood that they would tie their things to. On their sarkina, they would carry 14 days worth of rations, a water skin that would be filled with a drink called posca. A mixture of water, vinegar, and possibly herbs, drunk by lower class soldiers and slaves, typically looked down upon by the upper class. They also carried cooking equipment and two stakes that they would use to construct wooden walls called palisades. To help with this, they would carry a shovel. After the reforms of Gaius Marius, they would also have artillery. Every 480 men would have one ballista, and every 80 men would have a carry ballista, a cart drawn ballista. In one Roman legionary formation, they will end up with 10 ballistae and 60 caraballistae. Uh, with, uh, with ballista and caraballista, the plural you added e to the end. The Roman legionary would be armed with a gladius of the time. Oh, there were four different designs until they were eventually ditched for the spatha. They would have two javelins called pila, or a single pilum. They would use a pila to disable enemy shields before moving forward. They would have a pugio, or dagger, as a sidearm, in case they lost their gladius. In their offhand, a Roman legionary would carry a scutum, or shield. The scutum was a large rectangular shield that curved in towards the holder, protecting them from both the front and the side. 
The scutum was made with layers of plywood with the grains in the opposite direction. The Roman legionaries would fight in tight formations in what is known as a testudo, or that's Latin for tortoise. The soldiers in the front of the formation would hold their shields out in front of them, while the people behind them would raise their shields over them. The soldier would be enclosed in a box, protecting them from swords and spears at the front, and from arrows from above. The Romans would begin their assault by throwing the peeler at the enemy. The peeler would often penetrate the shield and hit the holder, but if it didn't, the peeler were made very well, and the shaft of the peeler would end up bending, making the shield unusable even if it didn't kill the holder, along with making it impossible for the enemy to grab the peeler, peel them, and throw it back at the Romans. Once the legionaries had thrown their peeler, they would then launch artillery at the enemy, sometimes with ballistae and sometimes with onagers, tiny trebuchets. These attacks would lower enemy morale and make them more likely to retreat or surrender. Followed by these attacks, the testudos would then move forward, moving into a close range of the enemy, rendering spears and pole arms unusual. Due to the tight formation of the Romans, they would only be able to stab and would be trained specifically to stab. Legionaries were trained to try and stab the abdomen of the enemy, causing fatal injuries. The legionaries were still trained to attack any opening they could and would commonly slash at the enemy's likely exposed kneecaps, inflicting great pain and possibly causing them to fall over, crippling them. The Roman legionaries were presumably paid well, making 225 denarii per year during the Pax Romana, the Long Peace. In the 1st century, the pay was increased to 300 denarii. During the 3rd century, the denarii collapsed due to hyperinflation, and pay for the legionaries instead became the right to take property from civilians. Loot from conquest was also often given out to legionaries, giving them an incentive to go to war. On top of this, upon retirement, they could be expected to, given, to be given land in Italy. Roman legionaries were trained in many tasks other than fighting. They were expected to be able to set up a camp and be able to swim. They were also builders, so they had to be able to build many things, and they were often used as a policing force, as there were no actual police officers in Rome. The main thing they were taught was discipline. For Roman legionary in training could expect to be punished physically, such as being forced to sleep outside or being beaten with clubs by their peers to ensure they meet the expectations of their centurion. If they were to do certain things, such as be a coward, desert the enemy, or break laws in Rome that would result in capital punishment, they would be executed by their peers. The point of this was to have the legionaries invoke fear in their enemies, along with producing well-disciplined soldiers who wouldn't back down from danger. The Roman legionaries were men who conquered the t Mediterranean. They invoked fear in their enemies and fought with terrifying effectivity, whether it be South in Africa, Western Spain, or Northern England, the Roman legionaries were sure to be there.